I've decided to do a song analysis for my uh, honors video. The song that I've decided to do for this is Carry On by Avenge Sevenfold. Um, the reason I've decided to do this is because Avenge Sevenfold is my favorite band. Um, they have a unique feel and technique and style um, than any other band around right now, I feel like. Uh, a little bit about the band. Um, they originated in Long Beach, California in 1999 while they were still in high school. Uh, they finally made their official debut in 2001 with their first, um, first album, uh, Sounding the Seventh Trumpet. Uh, a lot of their uh, influences come from 70s and 80s bands such as Iron Maiden, Metallica, and uh, Led Zeppelin. In most of their songs, uh, you can actually hear different elements um, from all of these bands in little pieces of each of their songs. Alright, now for the song Carry On. Uh, Carry On was a song uh, that originally was made for a video game. Uh, that video game was uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 2. And what it was is that the creators of Call of Duty were looking for um, a song at the end of the credits to um, kind of capture everything from the story of the game and serve as kind of like a, a fight song, like a, an upbeat kind of battle anthem. But um, it also needed to be heavy at the same time. Alright, so in the intro, uh, for most of Avenged Sevenfold's intros, uh, they like to just pop out right away with um, a heavy, uh, heavy instrumentals that capture you right from the beginning. And after this little trio, um, they hold a fermata for a few seconds before diving in and attacking in a preverse, which um, has a huge riff and just uh, continuous palm muting, for, um, followed by a little solo that gets it going into the verse. song is the chorus. Uh, what makes this chorus uh, so epic is um, the vocals and the lyrics that come into play. Um, the lead singer M Shadows just has a way of really delivering his lyrics that really just kind of get a feel of like motivation behind them I guess you could say. And um, it really just puts you like in the song, like in the in this case in the position of a soldier you know, and it just makes you, it's, he's talking about, you know, just never giving up and constantly fighting and fighting. And so he captures that very well. And also, the instrumentals, you'll find, again, the, uh, the same three guitars. You'll hear the rhythm guitar keeping the, keeping it all going. Uh, and you'll hear the lead harmony and the lead, um, melody playing a catchy, uh, a very melodic, um, tone in the back. And nothing too fancy, but it just it stays there, and it just really keeps uh, keeps you intrigued. And um, <clears throat> and you actually we experience a key change halfway through the chorus. It's the same structure, but um, just a key higher or a step higher, whole step higher. So the high point in any great rock and roll song, the piece that really pulls the whole song together um, is the guitar solo. Uh, the point where you know the lead guitarist really shows off what he can do, whether it's just shredding non-stop, showing off as fast as he can go, if he can tap, you know, or if also showing off how melodic he can be. And um, honestly, uh, to me, there's nobody better at this than um, the lead guitarist, uh, Sinister Gates. 
uh, in all of his songs, all their songs, he's he has a guitar solo that really fits the context of the song because anyone can just play a solo as fast as they want but it just doesn't fit the song, it doesn't have a good feel for it or anyone can try and be as melodic as possible and you'll get the same effect but um, he really captures this in all of his songs especially in this song um, he actually has two guitar solos well actually three if you count the one at the beginning but at the bridge he has one with uh, dual guitars with a harmony and um, and uh, a melody part and uh, it just it's it really fits um, right after the chorus and then after that there's a drum solo uh, that breaks uh, breaks up the first solo between the second guitar solo where the second guitar solo changes key it kind of turns into a darker solo and a more um, shredding one but then it ends up uh, all coming together at the end back into the chorus the final chorus So after the incredible solo, we they jump straight into the uh, to the final chorus, the third chorus, and um, after that, just like in their natural fashion, they like to end their songs also in a very epic way. So they kind of take what they did at the beginning, the slow pace, um, you know, kind of like slower beats, and end with the uh, fermata. So. Um, Again, they have the three guitars and they have a really heavy um, kind of outro. And on the last note, they hold it with the fermata and then it just kind of ends abruptly. And uh, I'll show you that. So that song uh, actually turns out to be one of their shorter songs. Only it's a little bit more than four minutes. Uh, most of their songs range from five to ten minutes, anywhere in between there. But yeah, so I tried, um, you know, really breaking it down, showing you all those parts uh, as best as I could. Um, I mean, now you can see uh, you got a better idea of their style. Like everything they do, they have just such a power behind it. And um, they just have their own way of really getting it across, their own styles, whether it's from the drummer, um, the vocals, or the licks that uh, Sinister Gates, their lead guitar player, um, throws in there. Um, that's something that I think sets them apart. Uh, they just they have, they have their own feel, their own sound. They don't sound like your typical uh, heavy metal band. But, uh, I mean, I guess that's what they're considered. But... Um, so yeah, that was Carry On, uh, one of their singles, and uh, one of my favorites. Um, so thank you very much.